Hello everyone, I'm Ted Kinsman and I'm a professor of photographic sciences here at RIT and today we're going to be talking about polarization interferometers and to start with I have a candle burning on this end and I have a 5D camera here and it's a, a 300 millimeter lens but it's set right now to 200 uh, millimeters and I have a light source and the light source has an 80 millimeter lens that goes through a beam splitter hit right here to the Wallerstein prism. And uh, that prism separates the two polarization fields, uh, the, the, the E and the O rays, that's the uh, ordinary and the extraordinary rays of polarization. And they're separated by about 0.1 degrees. So they're gonna go out there and then they're gonna interact with the object and then come back and as I move some of these things around, uh, we'll, we'll bring the lights down and we've got a monitor over here which really helps for aligning the system uh, when you're in the lab. And we will collect some data and see what the effect of changing the position of this Wallerstein prism is in the polarization. Okay, here's our top view. And we're going to point out some of the things here. The beam splitter is here. The light source comes through here, hits an 80 millimeter lens and goes down towards the big mirror in the back goes through this Wallerstein prism, and that prism splits the two polarization fields, the, the extraordinary and the ordinary, by about 0.1 degrees. So it goes down, hits the mirror, and comes back. And in this case, it's going through a candle. So we can see what the effects of changing the position of this Wollaston prism are. And the first thing I'm gonna do is it's on a micrometer, it's an XY micrometer, plus it's on a rotation, and I'm going to adjust the position of it, and I'm just changing it in the, in the in this case, the X position, and I get these, these beautiful bars that go up and down. Those are the orders of the, the fields as they're split apart. As I move this prism closer, I'm gonna focus that prism exactly on the center of focus of the mirror system, and that's the position where I can start to adjust the colors and I can get it in the blues or the reds, which people really like a lot. And this is bringing it back here, it's called defocusing. And of course I can change the position of that Wollaston prism and rotate it around. And this is focusing that prism back and forth. So once I've focused it, I can zoom in on that whatever color or line I want by moving one of the these verniers. Many people like that nice blue color, so we're going to try to get that in there. I'm going to try to rotate the prism so it's nice and vertical. So right there is vertical for the and then I'm going to zero it. And sometimes this is really hard to do with that candle burning, but I want that candle so you can see the full effect of what's going on. And now what I'm going to do is go to that first order purple, which is right in there. And I'm going to focus that Wollaston prism so it takes up the full field. So I'm going to do some other things. We're going to blow on the candle so we can see what happens with that disturbance. And a candle is a pretty big disturbance. So I'm going to take that candle out. And I'm going to put my hand in the way of the beam and we can see the heat rising off my hand. And this is a really good way of testing out how sensitive your polarization interferometer is. Because if you can see the heat coming off somebody's hand, you know that the system is pretty sensitive. Okay, so here's the polarization interferometer. And it's got a Wollaston prism in it. And I can move the Wollaston prism on a micrometer. So I can see the different fringes and I really want to get a nice colorful one, maybe that one. Now we're going to do some different things with this setup. It's, there's a bolt in there and we can see that the bolt has a double image. And that double image is from each of the polarization fields that go out uh, to the mirror and then come back. I can optimize it for one polarization field, but then I, I don't have as intense color. And I can, op I can also optimize it for the second polarization field, but I don't also have optimum color with that either. So you kind of split the difference between those two fields and that's when you get maximum color. Now there's a bunch of things you can do with this setup and one of the which is if I defocus the Wollaston prism by moving the prism away from the focal point I can start to see that there are lots of lines there 
and I can get this bolt sort of centered on that zero order right there. And because it, this is uh, this prism's on a, uh, a rotation device, I can I can rotate the angle of that, and I would have to realign that prism to get it back to where it needs to be. But I can change that direction of that prism. And the maximum location of this prism is a little bit low, so I'm going to bring it back up. So about that location and going horizontal, I'll bring that prism up to about the center of that. So there's a defocused Wollaston prism uh, with a polarization interferometer out of the, the focal point. Bolt out of the way, and I'll put my hand there. And you can see that the heat is coming off my hand quite clearly and that shows you that the system is pretty sensitive. I can put the bolt back in there because that gives me something to focus on to make sure the system is in good, good tune. And now I can bring that, that Wollaston prism back to the focal point. And when I do that, you'll start to see those lines kind of expand out by the way, there's a reflection there. And I will recenter my prism. As a matter of fact, I am going to move it down here to this purple. Because people really kind of like that purple, so it's that first order. And then I'm going to bring that, that prism in and maximize the color right at that first order. Because that will be kind of pretty right there. So, once again, I can look at the heat coming off of my hand, which is here. And the typical thing that, that is done is to not put your hand in the way, but to light a candle. So I'll put a candle there, and I will light the candle. So you can see that heat rising from the candle is very sensitive. So if you're like, oh, well, that's not my idea of sensitivity because I want to see the lines go in the opposite direction, we can change the lines to the opposite direction uh, so that the deflection takes place uh, more on the vertical axes than the deflection on the the horizontal axes. So here I'm going to defocus it again and we'll retune it when it's 100 degrees out. And I'm changing the, the polarizer here on the front of the camera just to make sure that I, I know where I am at as I rotate this Wollaston prism. back into play. And here we are back to the vertical. And you can see that that candle flame is, is like a cylinder of index changes in the vertical direction. And this prism shows that that becomes very sensitive there. So I'm going to refocus the Wollaston now as I go right into the, that purple. Where's that purple band? There's the purple. And I'm also um, thinking about changing the, the exposure just a little bit on the camera, but I think I'll I'll leave it there. By the way, I'm right here. I'm at f4.5 uh, and I'm at ISO 500 and this is a Wallerstein prism. The Wallerstein prism is made out of two quartz wedges and the angle between each of the quartz is 5 degrees. So a little bit later I'll switch to a different orientation for that. So here what we're going to do is we're going to put that candle in the way so you can see what it looks like when we do this and we will go between this image and the, what the camera records 
so that you can get a really good understanding of what is happening here. So I'm going to just fan this candle a little bit and we can see on the resulting video that we can see that fluid flow really well. Keep in mind that this particular Wollaston prism has an angle of the quartz of five degrees. The quartz is cut at five degrees and that gets the beam to split at 0.1 degrees between the two polarization fields. So we can do a lot of different experiments, one of which is to hold the, the lighter and we can light it to see what happens with that. And we can also just open the, the lighter up so you can see the gas that's burnt with your lighter because it has a different index of refraction. Okay, in this setup, instead of having the Wollaston prism here, I have a Namarski prism, which uses very similar designed optics. It splits a polarization field into two different vectors. In this case, the vectors are, they cross outside of the prism instead of inside the prism like a, a Wollaston does. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring the system to focus, recenter it, bring it to focus a little bit better, and bring it in. And the idea here is just to see the effect of a Narmansky prism versus a Wollaston prism. And you'll find out that the two are pretty much identical. In this case, uh, I am not sure what the angular measurement is. I think it's a little bit less than the, the um, 0.1 degrees, so maybe it's 0.07 degrees for um, this particular prism. And we'll test out it by putting the hand in the way. And you can see that the hand works uh, pretty well. You get a lot of color from that. And what I'll also do is I'll take this prism and we'll put it underneath across polarizers. So you can see what this prism looks like if you actually had one in your hands and how you could and if you're wondering about the lens here, the lens is set to 200 millimeters. It's a 200 millimeter macro. And it's, uh... so there's a nice Narmansky prism set up for polarization interferometry. To get an idea of what some of these prisms do, I have put a prism on a sheet of polarization material here. And in front of this, I will just move this as a polarizer. So I'm gonna put this polarizer in front of the, the, the camera, in front of the cell phone. And you'll realize that if I rotate this, you'll see that the material is, there's an angular component there but the, the material on the light source is strongly polarized. So with this relatively simple setup of a polarization sheet, our test prisms, whether they're Wallerstein prisms or Narmansky prisms, we can actually tell the difference by playing around with the different focal points of those. Uh... As I rotate this polarizer around, you can see that this prism has a tremendous number of really fine lines. That tells us that the angle is pretty good and that this angle uh, for this one is, is pretty close to our 0.1 degree system. And of course this is a Narmansky prism and Narmansky prisms separate into the two fields just as well as Wollaston's except that the crossing point of the two polarization beams is outside the prism, which makes it easier for uh, microscope applications. The prism in, the, in a bag, and we can once again see that the prism has a different focal point than trying to focus on those color lines, because they are crossing outside of the actual surface of the prism. So it's a great way of testing out your prisms. Here's our, our big five degree prism. And we can also see that it's a Wollaston prism and the focal point is inside the prism. So for all practical purposes, those lines are going to be 
highest contrast at the same focal point as the outside of the prism. And that's the difference between a Wollaston and a Nermonsky prism. Very cool. Um, I have a couple others here. They're still wrapped in their shipping bags, so we can check those out. We've got this little teeny tiny one here. Just a couple fringes. Super small for some mysterious application. Who knows what it's designed for? These, uh, the different numbers of fringes actually correspond to different magnifications of microscopy applications. Polarization angles. And they, they want to be really small for microscope applications so that those two um, fields, the two polarization fields, are recombined within the airy disk of your imaging system. And there we go. We'll maximize this. We'll hunt for that. There it is. Probably like a centimeter away from the other surface. So, uh, nice, nice example of a Narmansky prism, which you can identify from the change in focus. Well, we're talking about different pieces of quartz and different things you can do with them. I have a piece of quartz here that's placed between a two crossed polarizers. And this piece of quartz is cut exactly on the optical axis. So if we zoom in with the camera, we can look in and see the optical axis of the quartz, which splits up that polarization, which is a pretty cool thing to see. Um, kind of a, a nice way to verify that your quartz crystal doesn't have any twinning and that the crystal axes are where you think they are. So that's just a piece of quartz and of course the crystal axis is coming straight out towards us towards the camera and uh, this one is about uh, six millimeters thick and it was cut to test the direction of uh, the quartz axis in a piece of synthetic quartz. Hope you enjoyed this little demonstration. It's a pretty complex part of polarization optics but a fun thing to learn about.